We are visiting the Hogue Vein Institute in Fargo, North Dakota, where I have chosen a complex case to present my EVLA treatment technique using the Cyton Pro V 1319 nanometer ND YAG laser. The patient has arrived at the clinic and is greeted by the nurse. Paperwork is verified. The patient is brought to the procedure room where final preparations are made. Topical nitropase is applied to the percutaneous access sites to dilate the superficial veins. The patient is placed on a treadmill for several minutes to further optimize venous access. A stainless steel table is covered with a sterile half drape to provide a sterile feel for items needed during the endovenous laser ablation procedure. The items on the table include a sleeve of sterilized stockinette which has been tied off on one end and fashioned into a foot stocking that will be placed on the treatment leg as demonstrated here. A chlorhexidine alcohol prep is demonstrated for sterilizing the skin of the treatment leg. A U-drape will be used to provide a sterile field for the treatment leg. A micro-introducer kit is used for each venous access and contains one 21-gauge access needle, one 018-inch wire guide, and one microcatheter, which comes in assorted lengths of 10, 20, 30, 45, and 60 centimeters. The combination of these microcatheters and reduced buffer bare laser fibers are substantially smaller, easier to work with, and more versatile than commercially available laser kits containing larger diameter catheters and laser fibers. Using sterilized paper tape, the coiled laser fibers are secured to the table drape. A check flow performer assembly has been attached to a 10cc syringe containing sterile saline flush. The check flow has a lure lock connector that will attach to the microcatheter. A bare laser fiber can be inserted through the check flow into the microcatheter. A sterile ultrasound probe cover is used during the procedure. Sterile gel is first inserted into the closed end to facilitate sound wave transmission during ultrasound scanning. While there are various manual and automated techniques for performing tumescent local anesthesia, for this case we will be using a powered infiltration pump. Infiltration tubing attached to a three-way stopcock and a two-inch long 25-gauge needle will be used to provide local anesthesia at the skin puncture sites. A 22-gauge, 3.5-inch long needle is used to perform tumescent anesthesia in order to provide complete anesthesia during the actual laser ablation. Use of a powered infiltration pump results in less operator muscle fatigue, faster performance, easier ultrasound visualization without air bubble interference, and better technical performance. Sterile ultrasound gel is used during all aspects of this minimally invasive procedure. Non-biocompatible gel is used when just skin punctures are involved. However, during microcatheter insertion, a biocompatible gel is used to avoid potential allergic reactions that might arise with the use of non-biocompatible gel. An all-caught torque device is used to secure the bare laser fiber within the microcatheter to prevent fiber slippage during laser ablation pullback. A sterile paper measuring tape allows assessment of catheter selection, laser pullback rate, and vein treatment length. With the patient having documented small and great saponous vein insufficiency, the treatment plan for this case presentation consists of endovenous laser ablation of the small saponous vein, cranial extension of the small saponous vein, great saponous vein, and anterior accessory of the great saponous vein. The patient is first placed in reverse Trendelenburg prone position to allow for percutaneous access of the small saphenous vein. After numbing the skin with tumescent local anesthetic, 
A number 11 scalpel blade is used to make a skin neck. A 7 centimeter long 21 gauge needle is inserted into the vein using ultrasound guidance. An 018 inch wire guide is passed from the small saphenous vein into the cranial extension vein. Notice how the wire guide is steered into the cranial extension vein rather than towards the saphenopopoteal junction. The wire guide is passed into the groin area to the junction of the